The Book of Joel, Chapter 3 Lord God, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. Okay, we finish the little book of Joel today, Chapter 3. We begin our study in verse 1. In those days, and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem. And so this refers to a spiritual Israel, referring to the church of Jesus Christ, which consists of Jews and Gentiles who are right with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And God says he's going to restore the fortunes of his people. Verse 2, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will enter into judgment against them concerning my inheritance, my people Israel, for they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. Judgment day is coming, and it will occur in the valley of Jehoshaphat. And one clear criteria by which the unsaved will be judged worthy of hell is how they mistreated God's people. God's people do not mistreat God's people if they are truly right with God. So that is a criteria by which the unsaved will be judged worthy of hell. They mistreated God's people. 3. They cast lots for my people and traded boys for prostitutes. They sold girls for wine that they might drink. And so this description is an example of how the unrighteous have mistreated God's people over the years. Verse 4. Now what have you against me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all you regions of Philistia? Are you repaying me for something I have done? If you are paying me back, I will swiftly and speedily turn on your own heads what you have done. And so Tyre and Sidon were two cities north of Israel. They mistreated the Israelites repeatedly over the years. And God says, why did you do that? And notice what he says, why did you do that to me? Have I hurt you in some way? That you're getting revenge? God says, I'll get you. 5. For you took my silver and my gold and carried off my finest treasures to your temples. And that is what they did, all right. They offended God further by raiding his holy temple and stealing the gold and the silver cups and dishes and utensils and things. 6. You sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks that you might send them far from their homeland. And so they captured God's people. They made them slaves and then they sold them. Verse 7. See, I'm going to rouse them out of the places to which you sold them and I will return on your own heads what you have done. God will overrule the evil done to his people. He will save his people from the masters that they were sold to. 8. I will sell your sons and daughters to the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, a nation's far away. The Lord has spoken. God's justice eventually prevailed against Tyre and Sidon. They were captured and either destroyed or sold as slaves. The ones who were sold were sold to the Sabaeans, who dwelt in the remotest area of the Arabian desert, just as God suggests here. That is today's Yemen. Verse 9. Proclaim this among the nations, prepare for war. Rouse the warriors, let all the fighting men draw near and attack. Now this is projecting down into the future, toward Judgment Day. And the Gentiles are here preparing to wage war against God's people. Verse 10, Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weakling say, I am strong. And so they will put all their energy and their capital into winning their unholy war. Verse 11, Come quickly, all you nations from every side, and assemble there. Bring down your warriors, O Lord. The nations of the world are seen here gathering to attack Israel in the Middle East. 
verse 12, Let the nations be roused. Let them advance into the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the nations on every side. And so they think they're headed to the Middle East for war. But God is bringing them there for the time of final judgment. 13. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come trample the grapes, for the winepress is full, and the vats overflow, so great is their wickedness. God calls to his angels here to swing their sickles as if they were harvesters, and they are. Swing your sickle because the crops of the world are ripe. In other words, sinners are now ready to be plucked and judged. Verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. You know, men have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ by this time for centuries. Men have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of God's word, and now God will decide who believed in Christ and who did not. And thus God will here decide who is saved and who is lost. Verse 15, The sun and the moon will be darkened, and the stars no longer shine. And again, this is symbolic language which indicates God has arrived to judge sinners. Verse 16, The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the sky will tremble, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. For centuries, God's voice pleaded with sinners to trust Christ and to receive mercy. On the last day, God's voice will thunder at the world. The time for mercy is over. The time for judgment will begin. 17. Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion, my holy hill. Jerusalem will be holy. Never again will foreigners invade her. Foreigners, or those who reject Jesus Christ, will be nowhere to be seen after Judgment Day. No one will ever bother God's people again. 18. In that day the mountains will drip new wine, and the hills will flow with milk. All the ravines of Judah will run with water. A fountain will flow out of the Lord's house, and will water the valley of Achaeus. And so this beautiful description of a wonderful life is symbolic of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to save sinners and also to usher in a new enjoyable life which will last forever. 19. But Egypt will be desolate, Edom a desert waste, because of violence done to the people of Judah, in whose land they shed innocent blood. Egypt and Edom were long-time enemies of God's Old Testament people. And here, Egypt and Edom picture impenitent sinners. They will not, they will not enjoy good times. No good times for them after Judgment Day. Only for God's people, as we see in verse 20. Judah will be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem through all generations. And that simply refers to the fact that the Church of Jesus Christ will triumph forever. 21. Their blood guilt, which I have not pardoned, I will pardon. The Lord dwells in Zion. And so, through the cross of Jesus Christ, God's people are forgiven and right with the Lord forever. And judgment Day will usher in a time of joy for God's people and a time of terror for those who reject salvation through Jesus Christ. That's it for the book of Joel. We'll see you next time in the book of Amos. Until then, so long everyone.